It's okay. Here we go. Jay, give us an overview. Yeah, a couple things. Um, sorry for the delay. Uh, it's one of the greatest moments of my life, honestly. Um, number one. Number two, um, couldn't be proud of, more proud of our team. I think that uh, exemplifies the talent on this roster, uh, but more importantly, the character and the people. And as I look to my left, I just see three great players that are better people than they are players. Um, the best pitched college baseball game I have ever seen from both sides. Um, obviously, what Paul did was spectacular. Uh, what Thatcher did was spectacular. Um, you know, you might see four pitchers that were on that mound tonight um, from both teams that will pitch in Major League Baseball All-Star games. And um, hat tip to Coach Walter and Wake Forest. I mean, we just slayed a giant tonight, um, and that was special. And lastly, like, look to my left. If you're one of the best players in the transfer portal, there's only one place to come play. Because uh, last summer I spent a lot of time with these young men, and I think they would tell you they made the right choice. So um, I'd want to join forces with them if, if they're out there. Okay, Jay. First of all, we'll have questions to the student athletes. Once again, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. And we'll start here with Michael. Saw him first. Tommy, uh, earlier in the week you told us that you weren't freaking out. Yeah, everybody's freaking out on the internet, I think is what you said. But how confident were you despite the struggles here in Omaha? Um, I mean, I'm always confident in the box. That's just how I play the game. Um, I don't think I was struggling, but uh, <laughs> I thought I was doing all right. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, I was super confident. Um, just doing my deal. Uh, that's about it. Okay, right here. Left Scott Nick World Baseball Network. Tommy, can you uh, just take us through the pitch, what what you were looking for, and and how you prepped for that at bat? Yeah, so I was definitely going for heater. Um, I thought a heater was coming, but um, I was very amped up, and I saw a slider that was up, and I could get my bat head to it. So that was about it. Okay, Aaron. <clears throat> uh, Aaron Fit, D1 Baseball. Paul, I think a lot of people probably agree with. Jay here that this was one of the greatest baseball games that we've seen here in a long time. To be right in the middle of that, to be on the mound, you know, against Louder, this kind of epic duel. How, how do you kind of describe the whole experience of it? Um, to be honest, I think it was, it might have been cooler for the people in the stands than it was for me, um, just because all it comes down to is just executing. Um, I didn't watch a whole lot of, of Louder's outing. Uh, obviously, he did really well, um, executed really well, but um, just comes down to slowing the game down and going out there and executing. Okay, go to your leader. <clears throat> Leah Van Baton Rouge Advocate. Paul, I mean, you come in on probably your shortest amount of rest you've had all season, and I'm just wondering, what did the conversation about starting today look like? Was there ever any doubt? And just how did you feel about coming out for a second appearance at the College World Series? There was no doubt. Um, I know... Uh, you know, our strength coaches, Wes, uh, I knew everyone was going to do everything in their power to get me ready. Um, everything's, everyone's going to get everyone else on the staff ready to, to pitch, um, you know, two or three more times for, for the bullpen arms. Um, but there, there was no doubt in my mind. And to be honest, there wasn't a whole lot of conversation. Okay. Uh, Mike Farrar with Bird Sports Network. Uh, Paul, can you kind of describe about, I don't know if you saw on the Jumbotron that you broke the SEC and the LSU strikeout record. Could you <clears throat> describe what that moment is like for you? Um, I've gotten to talk with Ben a lot, and he called a lot of our games. Um, obviously, he had a really good career at LSU and uh, in the major leagues. Um, it's cool, and it, it's cool to, to leave a legacy. Okay, Michael. This is uh, for Paul and for Tommy. I guess just you guys saw the bunt coming, but Trey being able to make the play that he did and, the, and the, with the quickness and fluidity that he did, what, from your perspective, what do you guys think of that? Paul, you start. Um, I think he showed everyone in the country that he's the most athletic first baseman out there. Um, <clears throat> I, To be honest, I saw him lay the bunt down, and Trey kind of just came flying in and made the play, picked me up. Yeah, as soon as I saw the bunt, like the angle of the bat, I knew it was going to first. And um, 
I didn't see Trey. I was like, oh, God, they're going to score. And then he came flying out of nowhere, and Malazzo put a great tag on, so that was pretty awesome. Come over here. Uh, one last go, two, four, seven. Uh, when, when you're watching a pitcher's duel like that through eight innings, and then you come out and you have to go, you know, nine, ten, eleven to just kind of keep keep that up. I mean, just what 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 kind of mentality goes into that? And Paul, I guess, could speak to that too. Just getting those final nine outs there to kind of give your offense the time to win it. Yeah, I mean, uh, like Coach says all the time, it's just all about execution. Um, and I was going to do anything to get that win out for us. I wasn't going to let us down. Paul? Yeah, I mean, I was, I was with him between innings, um, super level-headed, and he knew that it, it just came down to, you know, what he went out there and did, um, or what, what he was going to go out there and, and do. Um, if, if you keep it simple and make it about executing, it's a really simple game. Okay, Matt? Matt Dean is White and Blue Review for Thatcher. Brock Wilkin up with two runners on, big spot. <clears throat> Would you go through... Mentally, and what did you do to execute to get out of that situation? <clears throat> um, I was going to go out the strike zone, trust my defense, throw everything with full conviction. Okay, Michael. For uh, Paul and Tommy, this was a goal to get to this spot right now. And talking to the guys on the field, they said a lot of it is, you know, this wasn't the end goal kind of thing. Just your thoughts on now being in the title series and what's ahead. Paul. Yeah, the whole year we knew we could do it, um, and that was the primary goal. When we, I mean, we had a meeting like January fourteenth or something like that, and um, the goal, you know, for this season was to win a national championship, uh, and you know, everything along the way would be b a bonus. Um, this was, you know, what we've had our eyes on all year, um, and it's really cool to to be here now. Tommy. Yeah, uh, pretty much the same thing, um, but. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, it's just going to come down to execution, just playing the game one pitch at a time. Um, we know what to do. We know what we got to do. And um, we're just going to play our game. Hope for the best. We got Mike Farron back here. Mike Farron, Mysterious XM. Tommy, a after the celebration, you went and embraced, I think, Camden Manassi. I know you guys were close. What, why was that important for you to do? And what kind of – a number of your teammates started doing that with Wake players. Why was that important tonight? I mean, the, their season's over. It's, it's, it's a very hard time. Um, they had high expectations coming into this, and uh, they played great. Um, but I, I've known Camden and uh, Bennett Lee for quite some time now. We're both uh, we're all from Tampa, and um, yeah, he's one of I played with him, against him, growing up my whole life, and um, yeah, I mean, he's one of my close friends. So um, I didn't want him to feel anything. I just wanted to make sure that he was all right. Okay, we'll go to Leah for the last question for the players. Tommy, y'all face a tough pitcher in right louder tonight. Um, you know, seeing him this entire night, what was difficult about hitting against him? Yeah, he just he executed every pitch. He took he threw all pitches for strikes, um, and he worked fast. Uh, yeah, he, he pitched great, um, but it's about it's about that's about it. Yeah. Okay, guys, thank you. Remind you that we'll have. LSU back here tomorrow morning. Our Florida part of the news conference will start at 11. About 11.20, 11.25, we'll have both coaches here for photo op. And then um, LSU news conference will follow that tomorrow morning with Jay and players to be named. So first question for Jay, and we'll go back here with Matt. And then. Yeah, Jay. Uh... You've been a part of some really memorable ones. You've won a national championship. What what about tonight differentiates it in terms of how special you feel it was? Yeah, I'll, I'll correct you. I have not won a national championship. That's okay. I lost to Heartbreaker, you know, two one-run games in the finals. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd like to try this thing through the winner's bracket one time. Um, but uh, I, that, that's pretty special. I mean, I it was not um, – over exaggerating, that is one of the greatest moments of my entire life. What happened on that field tonight? Okay, back here. Jay uh, Wilson here from the Advocate. Um, in all the plays that were in this game, that were so close. How much, when you think back on this, maybe years from now, are you going to remember Trey Morgan crashing and flipping that ball to Alex Malazzo? Yeah, we work on it all the time, and I'll, I'll tell you, um, it was a big benefit uh, who we played to get to this point. You know, when you look at Tulane, you look at Oregon State. 
you look at Kentucky, that's three of the best bunting teams in the country, and both going into the regional and the super regional, uh, we spent a large amount of time on punt coverages to both sides, safety squeeze defense, and um, we've finally been able to get him back over to first base here, you know, in the postseason, you know, because he's healthy enough to do it, and um, what a play. I mean, nobody's played better in this World Series than Trey, and there was, hasn't been a bigger play in this World Series than, than that bun play. Okay, Michael. Uh, I saw you smirk when they asked you about Paul getting the ball today. Just kind of elaborate, I guess, a little bit more on the no conversation. Yeah, so it was, it was pretty simple. Um, you know, we, we lost a very good baseball game on Monday night. Like, I mean, that was high-level stuff. I mean, if you rolled that out at Fenway Park or Yankee Stadium and you, you put big league uniforms on both teams, you probably wouldn't know the difference. That was a tough loss. And, and when you're in that 2-0 game or 1-0 game, Everybody knows the importance of it, only having to win one versus to win three. Um, that was a heartbreaker. We, we played good against another good pitcher. You know, Hartle's one of the best pitchers I've seen in a long time. Um, and so I felt like they just needed to be um, reminded of we definitely can do this. Two things. I mean, my team in 2016 did it, and LSU did it in 2017. So we weren't, you know, doing something that was going to be unprecedented so you start there and then the pregame speech to Tuesday was a really simple speech on the whiteboard in our meeting room I just wrote out Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Saturday Sunday Monday and on Tuesday I wrote Nate's name down with eight other pitchers and then we just drew lines over to Wednesday it was going to be somebody in that grouping of nine Thursday I wrote down Skeens heard I wrote down Saturday Sunday and then Monday one game this team to win the national title. I looked at it and goes, anybody got any questions whether we can do this or not? Great, let's get on the bus. And that was basically the announcement that Paul would pitch today. Okay, over here, okay. Clint Yates, ESPN, getting back to Trey, can you talk a little bit more about his development overall and what it was like for him dealing with the outfield when that injury situation was what it was before he got back? Yeah, he's a special competitor. I mean, you know, he is, he's meant so much to our team these last couple years. Um, and when it matters the most, that's when you get the best. And we've seen that the whole NCAA tournament, regional, super regional, for sure. And then here in, in Omaha, um, the situation is never bigger than his plan. Um, his, his competitive nature is spectacular. Then you add that with elite hand-eye, bat-to-ball skills, uh, defensive versatility to play first base, um, athleticism to go to the outfield, um, you know, I don't, there's not many guys that can that have all that skill set. And uh, there'll be a professional team when this is all said and done that will have a, a, a talent that's also a winner that can do pretty much anything. Okay, next question for Jay. Michael. Uh, same question I asked the guys about just this being the goal but not done kind of thing you, from your mindset now. You've wanted it so bad for these guys, and, and now they're in the, the title series. Yeah, I think um, – I haven't thought a lot about that just yet. Um, you know, we immerse ourselves um, in the present moment. I mean, going into the NCAA tournament, um, we talked about this team's had to deal with a lot of this thought of they're perfect because of their talent and their expectations. And, you know, John Wooden used to say, you know, winning is just about playing near your capability all the time. And I think we really settled in. We haven't tried to do too much, and we've really stayed in the moment. I think that was exhibited really well, which is why, you know, Paul pitched the first game of the NCAA tournament. I'd be a hypocrite if I said that, and then you don't lead with your ace against a team that was playing its best baseball. And so um, that was done for that reason. And so I just think we've been so immersed in that now that this is here um, it's not a surprise. And, and I will tell you, this is the first team that I've ever coached that I believe could win a national championship, hands down. And so in that meeting that Paul was referencing to, what do you want to do? Like literally me asking them, what do you want to accomplish? And it was kind of quiet. And I was like, no, okay, we want a national championship. Came out of Dylan's mouth. Are you sure? And then it's quiet. No, wait a minute. We got to be really sure if this is what we're going to try to go do. And then so we put it up there and it's just basically our road to the top. And then it wasn't about doing that. Now it was about how are we going to do it? You know, every step along the way, you know, both within the program and controllable things of are we going to be selfless 
Um, are we going to have a strong mental game uh, where we can recover from failure, resist the urge to be complacent? And then it's into the baseball stuff because the game doesn't change of what's required. And then we outline the things from the mound defensively, offensively from the bases that we felt like would be required to attain that long-term goal and uh, laid it all out. And uh, these guys have stuck to it every single day. Okay, Leah, this will be our last question for this session. Um, I mean, obviously we had the star-studded matchup with Paul and Rhett Louder, but what do you have to say about Thatcher and the decision to leave him in the game, um, you know, when you had a couple of guys warming up in the bullpen in late innings? Well, we didn't have anybody warming up. We had Gavin playing light toss. Um, you're talking about leaving Thatcher in, I'm guessing? Yeah. yeah um, it's, that is one of the best college teams I've, I've seen in a long time. I mean, not just this year. They had a, one of the most remarkable seasons I've ever seen. But that pitching staff, in my opinion, has seven guys that will pitch in the major league someday. Seven. I mean, that's, that's a lot. And uh, they're really, really hard to deal with. Um, it, was, um, it was a funnel of pitchers that were going to be available today. And, um, you know, we wanted to get Paul as long as we could. I'm really proud of him for getting us through eight. Um, I think it took that to win the game, honestly. And then there was only, there was only one guy that was going to get the ball after that. And um, we would have used him to close the game uh, last night if we needed to. I didn't want to do that because I knew he would be needed today, and it, it gave him an extra day after Monday. And he was spectacular. I think there was, there was one walk, and there was only one three-ball count the entire time he was on the mound. Jay, thank you. We'll see you in the morning. We'll see you in the morning. Yep. Thanks, buddy.